हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज योर गाय रजत फ्रॉम रेन स्टूडियोज डॉट कॉम सो मैं प्रीवियस वीडियो आई हैव एक्सप्लेन अबाउट हाउ द बेसिक वेब एप्लीकेशन इज आर्किटेक्चर्ड सो इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो आई हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट हाउ द डेटा गेट्स कलेक्टेड फ्रॉम द फ्रंट एंड देन इट गोज टू द वेब सर्वर देन इट गोज थ्रू दिस एप्लीकेशन लॉजिक वेयर ऑल ऑफ द मम्बो जम्बो एंड वॉट टू डू विद दैट पर्टिकुलर डेटा हैपन्स एंड देन इट गेट्स स्टोर टू द डेटा बेस एंड ऑल्सो हाउ फ्रंट एंड शोज यू इमेज वाया वेब सर्वर राइट सो ऑल ऑफ दैट थिंग वॉज कवर्ड इन माई प्रीवियस वीडियो इन केस यू हैवन सीन दैट वीडियो येड आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू ऑल टू go and check that video out prior to starting this new video now in this video i want to talk about load balancing and caching now why would you ever need to learn about these things see this setup is a single server setup so everything is residing on one server right so you have your database file system all of these files is stored on one particular server and this web server is also running on that one particular server now suppose that that server is having the configuration of 1 gb ram and and like 2.5 gigahertz processor right so you can only process so many records using that one server right what if your application actually gets very popular or it gets viral and now you are getting a hell lot of customers or users who wanted to try your application now what you will do you will run into scalability issues right because the processing power of your server is limited now you have to think about doing something so that your application can actually process so many requests it is getting with ease right so for that issue we use concepts like load balancing and caching so let's start with load balancing first okay load balancing is all about distributing the load of your application to some other server so that those servers can process the request and then act accordingly to the request so this is the example setup of how load balancing works out there in the wild so the user sends the normal request and it gets from the front end to this load balancer thing now load balancer is the actual mechanism which actually helps in balancing out the load so now here instead of having one web server you are having three web servers so the application logic which is running on all of these three web servers oops i think there is a typo this should be web server 3 so the code that is running on all of these three web servers are same so whatever this server is going to do for one particular data this server is also going to perform the same logic on that particular set of data right so the logic is same but the thing is that now all of these servers are having their individual ram and cpu so they can process triple the amount of processing power or the processing uh, like capacity your application actually requires right so if this server was handling 1 million request now your setup can actually handle 3 million request with ease so what actually happens is the request come to this load balancer then it it is the responsibility of the load balancer to figure out like which application server it should forward the request to so there are several mechanism and algorithms to determine like to which web server load balancer should uh, forward the request one such algorithm is the round robin algorithm what it is very simple right so so what it actually does is that whenever the request come it is going to route that particular request to the next server so suppose the first request come to load balancer so it will forward that request to this web server 1 which is hosted on this particular ip okay and when the request number 2 that is the next request comes it is going to route that request to this 
second server okay and when the request 3 comes it is going to route that to this web server 3 and again if the request come that will be the request 4 it will again go to this 1.1 web server 1 okay so that is how round robin algorithm actually work now there are other algorithms like ip hashing and all but that will be out of the scope of this particular presentation so we are not going to discuss about it in case you want to know more about these things or uh, if you are trying to figure out or trying to set up load balancing for your application i would request you to go out on your own and check out what other sorts of um, load balancing algorithms are out there and what people are actually using right so load balancer forwards that request to the web server now web server processes uh, that particular data now can all of these web servers can actually interact with the same set of file system and database right so they can all of these things can access the shared data right so if it needs some sort of data from the database all of these three servers can go out to the database or to the file system and then request for the particular resource and then get back that resource and then it can forward the response back to the load balancer and then it can go out to the user in a normal way okay now this is one setup where we have replicated the application web servers now now there can be other setup as well so one such setup would be like this here we have only one web server right so uh, there can be a case when your database uh, is underperforming or uh, your database has to serve millions of requests but your web server is very well positioned to serve uh, thousands of millions of requests right so in that particular case you don't have to uh, replicate web server what you have to replicate is the database instance so that database request can be processed more faster right so in that particular case you want to be establishing a load balancer in front of the web server and you won't be you know uh, creating the cluster of web server you will be creating the cluster of the databases right so the load balancer will be located in front of the database now whenever the web server requires some sort of data from the database the request is going to go to the load balancer now it will be the responsibility of load balancer to figure out like which database instance out of all these three is having the minimum amount of load so it will figure out uh, that thing and then it will forward your request to that particular database instance and all of these database instances are having uh, the access to the same set of data so it will just uh, get your data and return that data to the load balancer and that load balancer is going to return that data back to the web server and then the normal processing of the logic and uh, data routing will happen right so this is one other setup of how load balancing can be done right now moving on to the caches okay so why would you need a cache see uh, suppose uh, you have processed something or you have taken a photo right so you have stored that photo on a web particular server now whenever somebody uh, requests you that photograph you can give them the url or the location of that particular image and then they can go out and download that image that is a simple setup right but if that image is of size 5 mb right so again and again and again you are wasting 5 mbs if the user keeps on reloading his browser or whatever medium he is using to view that particular photograph so again the network transfer will happen right so uh, suppose he loads uh, your particular photograph which is of 5 mb for 5 times so that will amount to 25 mb of data that was downloaded by that user from your web server so in case you are paying for it right based on the mbs that gets transferred over the wire so the company who is renting out that particular hosting will be charging you for 25 mbs instead of 5 mbs so in those sort of cases we need caches so that 
we can readily serve the data from the KS so that we can save some network bandwidth or some processing power because see if the image is already fetched and it's it is already decoded on user's browser so there is no need to fetch it again and then waste more computation power on decoding it right so if it has already happened and the resource is not going to be changed uh, for a while so you can better cache that thing by caching you means storing that thing in a temporary medium so that uh, if a query comes at the later point of time you can readily serve that uh, query uh, from that temporary storage medium right so those are caches right now the things that are represented in this red dot represent caches so caches can be present at any level right so caches can be present between database and web server so suppose somebody is asking for employee record of employee ID 1, 2, 3. So if the database has recently served that sort of request to some web server, so if the request is going to come again, maybe database can put that data into a cache so that the next time this web server is going to ask for the same employee 1, 2, 3's data, it can readily return the data from the cache and database will never be hit for that employee number 1 to 3 until the content in the cache expires so you can program programmatically set the time of expiry of the content in the cache right so till the content is fresh it is going to be served from this cache so database want to be hit in that particular sense you are going to save some bandwidth of the database and the processing power wasted on processing that record of employee 1 2 3 again and again so if this user asks for a web page which shows the data of employee 1 2 3 at 11 am right so the request can follow the normal route then the data can be collected from the database and everything is returned to the user now this user again request the same set of data for employee 1 2 3 at 11:05 am now instead of following the normal route of uh, routing that request to the web server then to the database and then collecting everything and returning the response back to the user what you can actually do is you can establish a cache in front of the web server so if this cache sees cache already has the data of employee 1 2 3 it can readily serve that request from the cache itself and that is known as cache hit right in case the cache figures out that it does not have the required data then in that case it can forward that request to the web server then again the normal flow will happen but before routing that data or the response back to the user the cache will ensure that it stores the copy of the data so that if next time this request comes it can readily serve this request from its storage right so that is how caches are supposed to work now the reason i marked this front end as red because front end can also act as cache now in normal browsers you can actually set headers right so if you are returning a response from the server you can set headers and there is one such header like cache control now this cache control header actually tells the browser to catch whatever response we have got from the server for at least 300 seconds right so as soon as this response gets to the browser the browser cache will activate and it will store the response for 300 seconds so if you are going to request the same set of data i mean if you are going to reload the page you are going to see the same set of data and there won't be any network trip to the server because we have already instructed users browser to cache that content and serve that content from its local cache right so if user was requesting data from this post and 
this header was set from the server so the browser will cache the response for this particular url and if you are going to reload the page you are going to see the stale content which can be stale based on how frequently the data changes on the server so you set this sort of header according to what your requirements are and how fast the data changes on your backend right all right so this is all about caching and load balancing and how everything works so i hope that it will be beneficial for guys who are network admin sys admin dbas and all and people who are interested in learning more about devops concept right because the world is moving towards devops now now there is not a clear distinction between network guys developers and change management guys so everything is coming under one hood right so i thought that it would be a good idea to talk about load balancing and stuff so that you guys know like how high availability or scalability is achieved in big applications right so with that i am your guy rajesh saxena signing off and i have launched a new application pollenchat.com so you may want to go out to pollenchat.com and check the application out also if you are new to this channel make sure to follow this channel subscribe this channel and press that bell icon so that you get the notification whenever i upload a new video and that is it guys so i'm just signing off take care bye bye